Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Ba'ashim Avrakar Kodash, and double honor to the apostles of the Great Millstone and salutations to the Yakim out there to continue to further this ministry throughout the four corners of the earth. And um, it's the brother Monica come once again coming at you with another video. And before I get started in this video, I just want to just say a couple of words and saying that I've been away purposely for a week because I wanted to get my house in order. You know, once I've gotten that out of the way, because I thought I was going to get that out of the way sooner than later. But, um, you know, it took me a week to get everything in order. And um, I've done that. So now I'm back to my life again and doing these videos again. And, uh, you know, speaking of this video, as you've seen. The clip of the lightning just touching um, the building of um, around the World Trade Center, which is 30 minutes away from the Rockefeller Center. As this woman, she said she uh, saw it from the top of the Rockefeller Center. And, uh, you know, as you've seen it in the clip, the lightning just pretty much touched the building, as I've said, and I'll say it again. And to me. From where I stand, I would say that this is nothing more than an admonition from the Heavenly Father towards the Rockefeller family. Because, you know, obviously they're the ones that are in power that rule the North American system as it stands. Which they're no different than the Rothschild family. Which I wouldn't be surprised if they're actually related. You know? And, um, you know, it just goes to show you that the world is about to change. As we see the changing... And through the changing that we see, we see people doing as they may, expressing their anger and, and whether it's protesting or whether it's rioting all around the world, you know, and uh, the powers that be are on the prowl to, you know, get rid of a large population of people. And because of that, people are definitely waking up, which they should be waking up because right about now, the powers that be, they're showing their true colors which is very scary and frightening to the people. So that's propelling people to do as they may, as you see going on around the world with these protestings and stuff like that. So the world is changing through all of that, you know, and as well as that spiritual signs are being shown and declared to the elect and as well as the elect on the left hand side as well and warning the elite on the left hand side that the heavenly father's on his way and the angels are on their way to take them out of power and to set the righteous men of Yahweh Bashmi Shai in power. Okay? So um without further ado, let's get into a little bit of this article, shall we? So as it reads, it says Lightning strikes one world trade center as tropical storm Henry approaches New York. A lightning bolt struck near the one world trade center as tropical storm Henry approaches New York City on the twenty first of August. And uh, Liana Vera said she was on the top of the Rockefeller Center when she captured the moment that lightning hit the One World Trade Center. Henry was downgraded from a Category 1 hurricane to a tropical storm when it made a landfall on Rhode Island on Sunday. So, um, brothers, just bear me with this microphone because I'm just trying to keep this microphone sounding correctly, man. So, hopefully it doesn't go in and out. So, anyway... As it also reads, Liana Vera wrote on Instagram comments that the object seen flying in the video was a balloon that had flown into the air from the ground. Credit Liana Vera via story full. So I believe it was probably a chariot that also shot the lightning down just at the tip of the building. You know, as I've said and I'll say it again, I believe to where I'm sitting that this was nothing more than an admonition from the law towards the elite and letting the elite know that the Lord and the angels are going to make their return on the earth to be exact the heavenly father himself the son of the heavenly father excuse me he's going to make his return right along with the angels and when the Lord comes back which is the most important thing that we always talk about which is the, the incoming the grand incoming of Yahweh Shai and the angels and when they come back they're going to destroy totally wipe clean off the face of the earth this empire 
and set up the kingdom of the saints so let's begin by reading Isaiah 42 verse 14 as it reads I have long time holding my peace I have been still and refrained myself now will I cry like a travailing woman and I will destroy and devour at once and so I say again when the Lord comes back he's gonna come back with extreme anger to the point where the earth is going to quake at his presence and that's when the powers that be are going to realize that there's another entity much more powerful than they are that they can't even understand so as it further reads that i will make waste mountains and hills and drop all of their herbs and i will make the rivers islands and I will drive the pools. All right. And this reminds me of, of um, what was read in the book of Nahum. I believe I have it on deck right now. It's in the book of Nahum 1, exactly. 1 verse 4. He rebuke of the sea and make of it dry and drive up all of the rivers. Bashar languisheth and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him. And the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence yea the word excuse me yea the world and all that dwell therein and who can stand before his indignation who can abide in the fierceness of his anger and his fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him so the lord is going to get down so heavy that even the, the rivers are going to be affected by this that's why nahum said who can then abide in the indignation of the lord so when the Lord comes back again, he's going to express his anger towards his enemies. And the, the number one enemy to the Lord are these Edomites. So these elites, they're doing what they're, what they're doing to garner power and keeping the people in great fear. But these elites, what they don't understand is, and I think they do understand. But whether they understand or not, I'm going to just say it anyway. There's a power that they know. And as well as the world knows. Because you got groups of people in this world that don't believe in the Most High. And then you got the ones of our people that claim to believe in the Most High. But just in the traditions of men that they do. But anyway, this power is coming back to proclaim his position okay he's coming back to proclaim king and to, pro to proclaim his position that he earned because he gave the sacrifice and what was the sacrifice he gave his life up for himself and as well as he gave his life up for the elect so that the whole nation can be reconciled and to, and, and to also be blessed again so this is what the lord is setting up through his son he's going to set up a kingdom which is going to be a righteous one and this is going to be an eternal kingdom and it's and, and it's by the zealousness of the most high that this is going to be done okay so let me read this one more time i have long time holding my peace i have been still and refrained myself now will i cry like a travailing woman and i will destroy and devour at once and that's what the lord is going to do to america America is going to be devoured at once as it is written in the book of revelations that in one hour shall America or Babylon the great be destroyed as it is written I'll be right back so I'm back so verse 2 will I read again as well and I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all of their herbs and I will make the river islands and I will dry up the pools so all of this is going to happen when the Lord comes back and the, the whole entire world and as well as the earth is going to change so when the kingdom of heaven is set up it's not going to be like how it is right now everything's going to be totally different okay 
So there you go. So now let's go back to Nahum. And we're going to read verse 5 again. It says, The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence, and yea, the world and all that dwell therein. As it is written in the book of um, the Apocrypha, that there be many more of them that will perish than be saved. A lot of souls are going to perish through the Lord's return. And everything's going to happen in the Lord's return. You're going to have the nuclear war, which is World War Three. You're going to have uh, martial law. It's going to already been being declared on the streets. And the Lord is going to come in the, in the middle of that. Okay. And he's going to get all of that smoke. Verse 6, once again. Who can stand before his indignation? And the word indignation just simply means his righteous anger. So the Lord is going to be justified. And, and uh, as I'm going to say again, wiping clean from off the face of the earth, this empire, because of what? The sins that have been, the sins that have been committed. And also, as it, as it says, that the sins of Esau has been reached unto heaven. So it's going to come a time where the Lord is not going to hold his peace no more. He's going to let loose the floodgates of his anger. And then the powers that be, they're going to realize that there was a power that they've always known, but they've acted as though that power never existed anymore because everything was working so well for them. And they believed that Satan all this time had their best interests at heart and he was the power. But no, Satan was playing them like a fiddle and got them into big trouble with the Heavenly Father. As it, as it says in the scriptures, it says that even Satan or the devils trembled at, at his presence. So if the devil trembles at his presence, then guess what? There's one and only power that's higher than all of these different powers that he created, including the powers in the spiritual realm. The angels, you have the angels and as well as you have the demons. And the top demon on the left hand side is the spiritual demon Satan, which was fucking with Job. When you read the book of Job. And he only messed with Job because um, Satan was given the command. So as soon as Satan was given the command to mess with Job, that's when he messed with him. But when he didn't give, when he when the when the Most High didn't give him the command, he didn't mess with him. You see, this satanic power that they worship, who they deem as their god, thinking that this this Satan is going to pave the way for their birthright. That we've taken from them which is through the spirit and power of yahweh bashmi al shine anyway they think they're going to get it back through satanism and thereby establishing their one world system but no satan got them doing a b and c to fulfill the father's will on the left hand side and once they've done that now they're now they're in, in a quagmire of trouble now they're going to be in some deep elephant shit that's the best way I could put it. So anyway, who can stand before his, his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. So yeah, when the Lord comes back, as I've just read to you in Nahum 1 verse 5 into verse 6, the Lord is going to quake the earth. His presence is going to quake the earth and even his destruction is going to further quake the earth. So much so that even as it is written in the book of Mark, let's go to the book of Mark, shall we? It even says this, that the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So even the powers that are now today, as it is written in the book of Job 9 and 24, that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. They're going to be shaken out of power. Okay. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. As it is written in the book of Revelation 1 verse 7, shall we get that as well? It says that every eye shall see him. Revelation 1 verse 7, and even including those that have pierced him. Behold, he coming with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, 
and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen so every eye is going to see the lord including his enemies and those men are here today the men that that have pissed yahweh shall are back here in the reincarnation whether you want to believe in reincarnation or not which is a part of the gospel anyway you can't be talking about these men being 2000 years old because no one has lived 2000 years they haven't did it they haven't even come close to doing it in the past and they ain't going to do it now so what is this talking about this got to be talking about reincarnation because everybody is reincarnated back here on this earth as it is written in the book of um ecclesiasticus 12 okay and there's also one where it says there's no new thing under the sun saying that it's already it's already been of old time why because men are reincarnated men and women are reincarnated back on the earth and when these men are reincarnated back on the earth they do the same thing or similar all right so there you go so it says and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven why because they're going to be um they would have had already been doing the will of the heavenly father to be delivered as we're doing right now we're putting these shows up excuse me we're making these videos these lessons to exalt the brethren to continue in the faith you know we're risking our lives going out in the highways and the byways or wherever we be at whether we be in the park somewhere okay we're risking our lives we're sacrificing our time we're sacrificing our lives for the word of the lord we're giving us the right sacrifices so that's why we're going to get the right reward because of the right sacrifices we've given and what is that reward for us to be delivered from the dreadful anger which is for the coming on this earth from the heavenly father beginning with his son you see so before the lord comes back we want to be doing the right thing so that we don't get caught in his destruction you see so it says and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost parts of the earth into the uttermost parts of heaven and you can read that in the book of uh jeremiah 16 i believe it is in verse 14 all the way down to verse 15 and when he gathers the elect they're going to be set on earth as the saints possessing forever and ever the kingdom so now what we're also going to read is we're going to go back and we're going to read i believe it's in nahum verse 7 to connect what i've just read before so it says the lord is good and his stronghold in the day of trouble and he know of them that trust in him and how is the lord going to know of them that trust them because they're going to put their trust in the word as it is written in the book of um uh uh isaiah where it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the, and the, the fear of the lord will be his treasure you see that's how the lord is going to know that there's going to be men found with faith on the earth because they're going to put his trust excuse me they're going to put their trust on him through his word all right so with that being the case by that we're going to be delivered but with this devil now oh this devil's going to lose everything he's going to lose his life and that's what's coming and that's what this whole lightning thing was about man as i as i believe from where i'm sitting right now i believe that when this lightning hit the uh the world trade center which is 30 minutes away got a little bit of research on how how um the what is it the distance between the world trade center and the rockefeller center as this woman was was seeing it from is actually 30 minutes away so this is an admonition admonition excuse me i said it wrong is an admonition from the law towards the rockefeller family and letting them know that their world is getting ready to come to an end and that they're going to be taken out of power as i've just read in the book of mark the 13th chapter because remember what i just read to you in the in the book of nahum one on how the lord is going to quake the earth so much so that the mountains are even going to melt and the seas are going to be dried up due to his presence so much so that even the powers as it reads that are in heaven shall be also shaken 
and then automatically they're going to have to come to their senses that there's a power above and beyond their comprehension and when the heavenly father sends his son back his son is going to get the respect you see because it, it's only it's only about power see power paves the way for, pays the way for respect it's all about power and that's why so many men seek for power but see what we do um all we doing is, is is doing what the lord commanded us to do and that's to go out there and to teach his word and if we do what we're supposed to be doing we're gonna re we're gonna reap the rewards of what the lord is gonna give us and guess what the lord he's gonna set us up to be rulers and kings right along with him because it's not gonna just be the lord ruling by himself he's gonna have other men that's gonna be right along sitting at his table and they're going to be the kings of the earth but he's going to be the head king on the earth okay because you're going to have king david and as well as you're going to have the whole house of david which they're going to be kings themselves in their own right all right and what i was going to refer back to is revelations 5 verse 5 where it says that he will be considered the lord of lords and the king of kings so he's going to be the ultimate lord and, and as well as he will be the ultimate king over the house of David which is coming back in order again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai through this gospel for which we have been blessed with which is gathering the, uh, the, the members of the elect together scattered all around the, 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 uh, the face of the earth with this truth so anyway now what we're going to do is we're going to move forward and we're going to read the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah 49 and we will begin by reading verse 16 thy terribleness have deceived thee and the pride of thine heart O thou thy dwellers in the class of the rocks that holdest the height of the hill though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle and I will bring thee down from thence save the Lord so when we go back to this video which was seen some lightning struck the tip of the building maybe they did well in this building when it happened we don't really know because you know these elites they can go anywhere in the world they they want to go but you know they could have been in the building and this happened you know what i'm saying so hey man like i said this is nothing more from from where i stand and which is just coming from my perspective this is an admonition from the lord himself telling these people that look man I'm going to come and get y'all real soon. I'm going to allow y'all to keep doing y'all thing. And then once you do y'all thing. In other words. Make the MOTB mandatory. And do other things. I'm going to come in the midst of what you're, what you're about to do. And I'm going to destroy it. Alright. That's how I see this thing. So now let's go back to Jeremiah 49. And we're going to read verse 17. It says, And also Edom shall be a desolation, and every one that go about shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all of the plagues thereof. And the ultimate place of Edom right now, because Edom's all over the place. You have Edom in England, you have Edom in Spain, you have Edom in Portugal, you have Edom in Italy, you have Edom all around Europe. But the ultimate place of Edom is Babylon the Great, which is America. As we believe it to be, we believe America to be Babylon the Great. And that's something that we've been teaching for the longest time, beginning with our elder and our apostles. And now what you have, you have Christians that are, you know, somewhat study that know a thing or two about the scriptures. They're coming around that, that uh, America is also Babylon. Now they would wish that that would not be the case. But. It really doesn't matter what they think or what they want to wish for it to be. It is what it what the scriptures say it is. It's Babylon. It's Babylon the Great, which is the eighth, which came out of the seventh, came out of Great Britain, which will go into what? Perdition. What is perdition? Destruction. So as it continues to read, everyone that go by it shall be astonished and shall hiss up all of the plagues thereof. So all of the nations are going to realize man this place was a great city but guess what now nah, it's destroyed 
Let me look up that word his real quick. So the word is sarag. Which means to hiss, to whistle, pipe, to hiss as a signal. So it just means to whistle like. Man. And as it reads, verse 18, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, excuse me, save the Lord, no man shall abide there and neither shall the son of man dwell in it. That's the, going to be the judgment of America is that that place is going to be wiped clean off the face of the earth, which is nothing more than the influencer of the world. If you look around the world, the world has actually now, don't get me wrong, you have nations that keep their traditions to a certain level of degree, but they've also mixed in Western philosophies, which comes from the uh, the use of the so-called United States of America through these actors and and uh, with these films and as well as the music and just the whole Western lifestyle, which is, has influenced these other nations for some time now. Like in China, you can go certain parts of china you will find mcdonald's somewhere or you may find a hooter somewhere okay but somehow some way these other nations are being influenced by the west and the ultimate western world that they're, that they're being influenced by is america which is that which is the great hall as it reads which sit of upon great waters on excuse me on many waters Revelation the 17th chapter and the, the many waters is referring to the other nations and she sat upon that also the red dragon which the red dragon represents the EU okay hence you have the term NATO which is called uh, which is an acronym for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization okay because America were um, were confederate with the EU so when they came together they became NATO. So there you go right there. But that whole organization is being divided now. Because we're approaching that time of uh, the end of, of an, an, um, an empire or a kingdom. And when a kingdom comes to an end, before an empire comes to an end, many things have to happen. And the things that's going to happen when an end of an empire comes around, there's going to be divisions. And this is what we see happening right now. We see divisions going on even among the race of people and as well as these organizations beginning with the top tier of the uh, the people of Edom and their governance. They were all being divided because what made Esau powerful and strong is when they were connected together. When the EU was connected together. When even America was connected with the EU. But now all of that's breaking up slowly but surely so that's how you know that we're approaching the end of an era and as well as the end of the time of the so-called white man i have to put it that way but that's what well, that's the time that we're living in right now so as we're living in these times things are happening there's divisions that are, that are going on so that's all i want to say from there so anyway Let's read this again. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, say of the Lord, no man shall abide there and neither shall the son of man dwell in it. And as it reads in the book of, uh, I believe it's in the book of Isaiah 34, it says that as well, that not even an Arabian tent shall be pitched there. In other words, no human being is going to dwell in America, but rather desert like creatures will dwell in these areas of America. And you're not going to know the difference between this state and that state connected to this state is going to be a desert forever so the way Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed America would be destroyed in like manner all right no more will America come back into power again and there will be not a fourth resurrection of the Edomites this is it where we've reached the end of the uh the time or the the power of the, the so-called white man we're reaching that time now and uh it's it's very well clear and this is why they're running with this whole vector thing 
and they're trying to get people to take the thing and really what they're trying to do is they're trying to they're trying to see if they can they can um kill off the elect but the elect can't be can't be deceived and the elect cannot be killed unless the lord sanctions it and the way that the elect are going to be killed is by giving a, a sacrifice and trusting in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai and forsaking of all of that, which is what the beast will command the people to do. All right, there you go. So, anyway, let me see if I can continue to read on. Yeah, so that's all I got to read. There you go. So, anyway. Let's go and read Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shagayanoth. O Lord Yahweh, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Because at the end of the day, as I've said and I'll say it again, as we all know, and it's true, we know that when the Lord comes back, he's coming back to wipe clean and he's coming back to destroy. And the way that he's going to do it, he's going to do it in a monumental way. And it's going to be like the Lord is going to seek to kill everybody, but he's not. So that's why Habakkuk said what he said, because he heard the speech as it, as it is written. And he, uh, you know, he prayed to the Lord and saying, remember mercy and the Lord will remember mercy. Those that will have faith in the days of trouble to come. Those are the men that he's going to have mercy upon and as well as the, the, the women too. They're going to be deserving of mercy. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking of if I could continue to read on. Yeah, let me read this. It says, The Mosai came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Salah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. So, this is Habakkuk visioning basically the coming of Yahweh Shai. And his brightness was as the light, and he had horns coming out of his hands. What is those horns? Those laser beams coming out of those chariots. Because as well as you have Esau and these Edomites, they have firepower, don't they? But guess what? The Lord gave them that firepower. So why wouldn't he have the firepower? So he's coming with firepower. But this form of fire is going to be concentrated, which is going to be laser based. Okay? Which is basically concentrated fire. And with that, that's how he's going to destroy these elites. And Esau already knows that the Lord is going to come back. They've made films about it. So how can they not know? They know about this power coming back. So it reads, And there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence. And burning coals went forth at his feet. Again, those lasers. And he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. And the perpetual hills did bow, and his ways are everlasting. Okay, I saw the tents of Kashan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. And was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers, as it reads in the book of uh, Nahum 1, verse 4, right? Let's go back to that. Nahum 1, verse 4 He rebuke of the sea and make of it dry, and drive all of the rivers. But Sean languisheth in Carmel. And the flowers of Lebanon languisheth, right? So that's what Habakkuk is seeing. That was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bowels was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy words, Salah, and thou didst cleave to the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of, of the water passed by the deep, uttered his voice, and lifted up his hands on high. And the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. And at the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glory they ring spear. So he saw the Lord shooting out lasers, basically. 
Okay? So this is what the Lord is coming back with. And the elite, they, they're going to have to deal with all of this. This is way more than a handful that they have to deal with. <laughs> so, when you read the book of Habakkuk, especially the third chapter, he basically lays it out on how the Lord is going to destroy the wicked. It's right here. He lays it out. Okay. So let me continue to read on. Thou didst march through the land in indignation, and thou didst thresh the heathen in anger, and thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed, and thou wouldest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundations unto the next Allah. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages, and they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. And their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. And that's what they're planning on doing right now. Like um, the brother, I believe his channel's name is Ak Judah. He was doing a video on how um, Joe Biden almost saying our plan is to do this or that to the, to the nation of Israel. He just about said it. So their plan is, is to take out our people. But see what the Lord has in plan, which is going to work, is that the Lord is going to take out the powers that be and the whole entire nation of Edom. As it is written in the book of Proverbs 19, where it says, I believe it's verse 21, where it reads, that there be many devices in a man's heart. But the devices of the Lord, excuse me, but the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So what is the devices of the Lord to destroy and to devour all at once these Edomites and their society? This is one of this is the most important thing to speak about because the Lord, when he comes back, he's going to do these things right here and set up the kingdom. So the world is only going to but change through his 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 returning his his grand entrance. That's the only way the world is going to change through his return. So that's why this topic that I'm going into is very important, man. And these elites, they're shitting themselves. They got to be shitting themselves because they know that they're in a world of hurt, man. Let's go back to Habakkuk, the third chapter, shall we? It says... And thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, in other words, the chariots, through the heap of great waters. And when I heard, my belly trembled, and my lips quivered at the voice, and rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up, up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Let me read this again. Let's go up and read this again. It says... Right, so Habakkuk's talking about what Esau's going to do to the people of Jacob. Okay, so um, when you really, when you read from Habakkuk 1 to verse 3, he's talking about the Lord doing what he's about to do, basically. From Habakkuk 3 verse 1 to verse 13. Verse 14, he talks about the wicked rising up against the poor. Okay. And uh, it's going to happen. The Lord is going to give Esau a charge over our people to take them out because they don't want to repent. And uh, that's explained in verse 14 all the way down to verse 19. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so there you go. As you know, verse 16, verse 14 to verse 16. So yeah, that's all I have to read from there. But yeah, this is what the Lord is going to do. The Lord is going to come back and... Um, Give Esau the business. And we're going to see it too. The whole world is going to see it. And then the world is going to have to be remindful of. How not to govern. Yourselves. And as well as govern the people around you. Because the way that they govern the people. And including themselves. Was after the ways of Sodom and Gomorrah. Alright. 
and just overally taking on the customs and the traditions of the other nations which is all nothing more satanism basically you know so the lord is going to give the uh how should i put this the most high is going to make a statement towards these other nations and saying that this is not what you do if you rule a kingdom contrary to my ways this is going to be the outcome as well as he made a statement in destroying sodom and Gomorrah. all right so much so that it's even still spoken about today so that's what the lord is going to do unto america and as well as all of these western nations as well he's going to destroy them and uh all of these nations are going to be where and be put into fear and um they're going to serve the lord through us so that's what's coming that's what's coming man so with that i want to give all of the praises to the most high and his son yahweh Bashim yahweh shai Bashim avakar hakwadash and also shalom to the men of Yahweh Bashmi Shah as well that's furthering his, his ministry and as well as those that are growing thereby in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Shai and all of that good stuff. So anyway, I'm out on to the next one and I say Shalom.